my feet have grown two foot si- two shoe sizes since I started gaining <laughs> because weight. Because of the the blood or water <laughs> I, retention? I don't have an answer for you, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how long you've been using PEDs in general, but um, you've talked about it on your YouTube channel. It seems that you've been doing things safely. And one thing that I've noticed, we had somebody else on the podcast who I mentioned his his breathing was normal. That's something I don't see often when guys guys use quite a bit of stuff. Their breathing ends up being pretty labored. Um, how have you been able to navigate that while making sure everything is super safe? And how long have you been taking PEDs? So first of all, it's going to be upfront. Like it's not you can't make it super safe, right? You can make it as safe as safe as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, but I started using PEDs in the spring of 2016. Um, my first untested meet was Texas State. Uh, which was April 2016. So I, I want to say I did six or eight weeks before then. I can't quite remember. Okay. Um, but so that's when I was starting. And I haven't come off since then. I've done blast and cruise where I'll drop down to like 200 milligrams of testosterone in between cycles. Um, and recently, since I've gotten bigger, it's been 200 milligrams of testosterone, 200 milligrams of nandrolone. Um, but I, when I started out, I didn't know jack. And I wasn't using super high doses because, again, couldn't let my body weight get that high. So mm-hmm. I think the highest I ever went for powerlifting was, I want to say, and I I did not do a good job of tracking any of my gear use. So I, I, I'm not going to swear to this. But I, I want to say my heaviest cycle was off season was 500 tests, 300 deca, and 50 anivar uh, for like eight weeks. Now, in season, I could push the, the androgens, right? Like the halo, the trend, the stuff that's not going to add a whole lot to body weight. Um, and I know I went up to at least 500 trend at one point, and I know I did 40 halo for f- four weeks, might've been five weeks at one point. So I, I pushed the drugs, right? But in terms of absolute, well, nowhere near what it would be for bodybuilding. So from 26, well, 2016 to when 2019, right? So the first three years of using, it was, I would say <clears throat> low dose, moderate dose, just for practical reasons. Like I wasn't going to be able to reach my goals anymore. And that means you were 28 when you started using PEDs, right? I'm going to take your word for that because I can't you're 34 now. 34 now. That was <laughs> six years ago. 2016, you said it's the first time? <laughs> yes. So you're already training right. for a long time. Yeah. How long were you training before? Because, lo- yeah. So I started training? training in 2001. And by the time I got, so honestly, the reason I got on was uh, USAPL Raw Nationals in 2015. I placed second to John Hack. I deadlifted 500 at 183 and, or 500, 700 at 183. And John comes back 15 minutes later, right, in the next flight and just destroys it at like RP6. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not competing against this guy. He's just yeah. going to kick my ass. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll go to the untested division where he's not, where he isn't. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that worked until he decided, like, all right, I'm going to go to the untested division. <laughs> didn't they drug test you that day, not him? They, I, he gave me like the WADA drug test. And I was like, I didn't even win. This is kind of bullshit. And that <laughs> yeah. kind of pissed me off. Um, it was me and uh, the other guy's name was Alex Tratisky. And we were like, we were the most jack guys of the meet. Mm-hmm. So it's like they pick and choose. I was like, but this isn't going to work for me. Dude, that's actually that's actually really crazy because okay, 2016, you trained for 15 years and you were already 100 and how many pounds before you did anything? 183, and I had to cut for that. I remember I cut from 190, and it was a hard cut um, wow. because at the time, like, it's a lot harder to cut when you're natural. But I think that's a that that's something that I want a lot of guys to pay attention to because like you started in high school at 103, you got to 180 something pounds jacked without having used anything, and, and I you think pulled 700, and then you pull fucking 700. That's huge. Yeah. I think if you look at the guys that wait the longest to get on, those are the ones who tend to do the best. Yeah. And you, you, you mentioned uh, you pulled 700 at that body weight. Um, and you mentioned your best deadlift in competition is 800 pounds or 804. 815. 815. Yeah. So I think that a lot of times people think they're going to take steroids. And 100 pounds, let's face it, like that is a lot of weight. And especially when you're already that strong. However, we don't really know what you could have pulled had you just not taken anything right yeah so and if you would have went up in weight naturally we don't know exactly um i think so my best total ever natural was like 1650 right around there my best total ever on stuff was 2039 but that was 15 pounds heavier with weight uh with knee wraps with a deadlift bar with a 24-hour weigh-in with a huge cut better training better training how long have you been training between those yeah four years yeah. Yeah. so That's four more years exactly yeah. right yeah. so it's like how much you're getting out of the the drugs from for a strength perspective probably 10 to 20 percent at the most mm-hmm. now from a size perspective you get a whole lot more <laughs> yeah but yeah i, I think dr- people really 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 overestimate how much the drugs can do for 
strength. And, and I've they just seen, give you that one that one jump, though. They don't give you a continuous jump forever, right? Absolutely not. And that's that's another reason why I think it's really important to not get on until you really have pushed yourself as hard. Maybe not all the way that you can naturally, but pretty far because you need to know how to train. If you just get on from day one, the drugs are going to do a whole lot for you, and you're going to try to keep progressing by adding more drugs and more drugs and more drugs, and you're never going to realize, hey, I don't need more drugs. I need better training. Mm -hmm. And if you start out focusing on the training, you're like, okay, this is what works for me. I'm going to add this, you know, NO2 boost, essentially. <laughs> then you can always come back to those training methods that work for you. They're still going to work. They might work even better because you can handle a little bit more training volume, but you're always going to have those core principles that are going to get you help you continue to progress. I think when it comes to steroids, performance enhancing drugs, I think there's there's a lot of problems that make it like really hard to detect how dangerous they really are. Um, most of us have a lot of other good habits, you know, like a, most, uh, a lot of lifters don't really get too crazy into drinking and people that are getting into bodybuilding and taking it really seriously. We value our sleep. Uh, we are obviously exercising plenty, right? What happens though is you, you, if you take a lot and you get way deep into the weeds of, of this sport or strength sport, as you're, as you're, as you're moving along, you're like, you know what? I better get my shit like checked out. Like something's probably not yep. good. You have a nosebleed during a squat or something. Yep. You're like, oh, I don't know. You know, or you have a nosebleed tie in your shoes. You know, you know that things are probably not great. So you yeah, get your blood pressure checked. It's through the roof. You look at some of your other blood work. Your red blood cell count is high, right? <clears throat> you do things to address some of these things. You also, uh, you taper down the amount of stuff that you're taking. And then you're quote unquote fine again. And you keep looking at that and you're like, oh, I'm good. But we don't really know the long term. You and I can Absolutely. stand here or all three of us can stand here and say, we don't really know what the fuck's going to happen. Yep. We, we, we made a choice. It was a particular decision. And we don't really, tr I just want to make that very clear to people. We don't truly know. We can look at our blood and we can be like, hey, I'm doing pretty good. Or I'm running nowadays. I'm doing other things. But I don't really truly know what I did or didn't do with the amount of stuff that I took for my powerlifting career. Absolutely. Yep. And this is, I, I, I'm curious what your advice would be because um, like nowadays on social, I've, I've watched some of your content and the way you put forward the content in terms of your PED use is super like responsible. Like you, you, you preface things, you, you, <laughs> you make sure people understand what the fuck they're getting themselves into. But man, like I'm, I'm watching some of these like 20, 21 year old dudes, 23 year old dudes that are talking about, oh, I'm on trend and like all this shit. And they're just like, yeah, 500 milligrams of this and whatever, but they don't seem to help people understand what the fuck they're getting themselves into when they do choose to go down that route. Yeah, so a couple things there. First of all, one of my posts on Instagram got flagged for promoting <laughs> drug use, so I'm going to have to tone that down a bit, even though I do try to be really responsible about mm -hmm. it. Second thing is, I know what I don't know, right? So when I was getting my uh, PhD, it was at the University of Texas, I did a lot of work with Victoria Felkar. So she is one of the top PED experts in the world who actually understands this stuff. Actually What's understands her name? Victoria Felkar. We got yeah, to mm -hmm. get her on the podcast. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'll, yeah yep. She'd Same. be happy to. Um, so she, she un actually understands. And talking to her, it's like, so I, I have no idea what's going on. So I can only tell people, you know, this is what I know. Talk to somebody else who is more knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And I feel very comfortable doing that. The most important part, I think, if somebody really knows what they're doing with PEDs, they either are not going to share that because that's what's going to, that's a service they can sell, right? They're going to be able to coach you and take you to a top level and charge you a lot of money for that. Or they're not going to tell you because they know, hey, this is really individual. This can really fuck people up if I just, just, just give generic advice and it's not a safe thing to do. So the people who are putting out free information about PDs don't know what they're doing. And unfortunately, that's what propagates because people don't want to have to pay for information. They think that that should be free. Um, so it, it ends up kind of snowballing and puts us in a situation where, A, performance-enhancing drugs are really demonized, right, because people end up using them irresponsibly. Yeah. B, there's very few good sources of information because they get clouded out by the noise from the bad information. And C, people who think that they're doing their research, you know, they're putting in the time, they're going through all this information, but they don't necessarily actually get good information out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's in contrast to things like training where we can do studies, right? It's ethical to, you talked about this in your documentary, it's ethical to take somebody through a hard training session and see how their body reacts. It's not ethical to give somebody two grams of trend and see how their body reacts. <laughs> yeah.
In, well, in Russia, it is. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay, so you mentioned good sources of information. Victoria Falker, we got to get her. But who else do you think, if people like they really want to go down that rabbit hole and they want to get some good info because everybody's throwing out information on this shit, who should people be paying attention to? So, I mean, I know they're opinion, yeah. sponsoring this podcast, but Merrick Health mm -hmm. reached out to me recently and they have been fantastic because mm -hmm. with them, I could get like, so you go, go through a normal like blood panel, whether it's through your doctor or through one of those websites or whatever, and you get kind of the basic information, right? You're, you're getting your metabolic profile, you're getting your lipid counts, you're getting your testosterone, your hormone levels checked, but you're not getting some of the other stuff, right? So like, for example, when I went to Merrick, my vitamin D levels were like really, really low. And that's oh. one of the, one of the smaller things, right? Like there was also some issues where signs that, Hey, maybe my insulin sensitivity is not the best. Maybe there are things we can do to improve that. So I think there's a lot to be said from the performance enhancement side, but also the fact that, hey, they're actually willing to work with you. They realize, well, you know what? Your goals aren't exactly normal goals, so maybe you don't need exactly normal levels of testosterone. What can we ethically do to help you? And understanding that, hey, maybe you're going to choose to do a little bit more. That's that's your choice, and at least we can try to make it healthier. Okay. The other guys I talked to, um, Joe Jeffries is a friend of mine. So he is a bodybuilding coach that also, just like Victoria, she knows a lot, he knows a lot of really, really good information and He's helped me set up my PED use for bodybuilding in a way that, you know, it's something that I feel at least you're never going to know, right? You're never going to know, is it actually safe? But I feel like, okay, I know the risks I'm taking. I'm at least maximizing my safety as much as I possibly can. What are some of the differences between like things you would take for bodybuilding versus things you would take for power, powerlifting? So for me, it really comes down to the anabolics versus the androgens. I... And again, that's because I'm typically a weight class guy for powerlifting, right? So the androgens are typically going to have less of an impact. They're not going to push up your body mass that much. You're not going to retain as much glycogen from them. But you are going to get some of those other benefits that are going to translate into strength down the road. And again, it's a little bit over my head to talk about, you know, from a biological perspective how that's happening. But I think it's a fair generalization to make. For me, for bodybuilding, it's really about the anabolics, and it's okay. So, what anabolics can we tolerate without side effects, like the heavy, heavy breathing stuff? I don't, I don't. I think I forgot to get to that. Oh yeah. Um, but those are the ones that are going to help me add more size. So for me, that's really testosterone, and then maybe I can use a little bit of nandrolone without side effects. And um, but testosterone seems to be the one that mm. I that I do the best with. Um, and then doses. It's like. For for powerlifting, you can be taking three grams of stuff, and you're probably still going to get that ten to twenty percent. For bodybuilding, it's really how much can you tolerate? You're going to get bigger. Mm, yeah. um, so we were actually talking about this last night, kind of on the anabolics versus androgenics. The uh, um, might be more valuable for bodybuilding to stay on these cycles for longer, but have less harsh compounds. Whereas in the strength, you don't have to spend all that time ramped up on shit. You can peak properly in training, peak, peak properly with your diet, and then there's more game day stuff, uh, faster acting stuff that you can yep. peak as well. Andrew, see if you can find that family tree. <laughs> also, <laughs> that what? steroid family tree. Okay, I'll look it up. <laughs> Tell people how to get Merrick real quick. Since oh, we yeah, yeah. Them. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> you guys are going to be hearing Merrick way more because they got, they got Ben on it. Stan was talking about it, and of course, we are all using it as well, so... If you want to be like us and get your blood work done at Merrick, head over to MerrickHealth.com. That's M-A-R-E-K Health.com. And at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT10 to save 10, to save 10 off all of your labs. Um, again, this is if you already know what you're, going, what you're going for. So if you want to get your test levels checked, you want your estrogen, whatever it may be, add those all up in your cart and use promo code POWERPROJECT10. If you don't know where to start, head over to MerrickHealth.com slash POWERPROJECT and you guys will get the uh, Power Project panel. And that's uh, 26 different labs. It's going to cover everything you need. And make sure you use promo code POWERPROJECT to save $101 off of that. So what was the steroid tree you said? Yeah, steroid family tree. Steroid. Oh my God, are you eating mm -hmm. something? Are no, you? dude, I was literally about to cough. And then like you <laughs> said that. So I'm all like, the oh, my, oh, my bad, homie. It's all right. <laughs> so, oh, here it is. While <laughs> he's finding that, I want to talk about the breathing thing because really that's a great good. question. So... I mentioned how the anabolics, I tend to get side effects from when I push those doses, right? And for me, it's water retention to the point where it's really uncomfortable to tie my shoes and walk upstairs. And so right now I'm not on high doses for me, right? It's still probably high doses for most people, but not for me. And so 500 tests is what I'm running. Plus, like I'm taking blood pressure medication, and uh, glucose, whatever. 500 milligrams of anabolics. So I can breathe fine at this dose. It's not an mm -hmm. issue. But when I'm pushing, you know, if I'm on a gram of testosterone, then 
you know, all train, I'll have a bunch of carbs around training and my whole face will be like bloated because <laughs> my whole body's bloated. It's I all think pumped that you up. posted pictures. Yes. Like your eyes. And I can't breathe through my nose. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like gasping for air. So the heaviest I've been was 272. That's the heaviest I've ever stepped Holy on a scale. Shit. Um, <laughs> and so that that's got to look gnarly, right? Yeah. Oh. So that wasn't first thing in the morning, but still that heavy. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's a challenge to breathe it that way. Even at this weight, if I'm like, if I take a pre-workout, that's going to pump me up and then I, uh, and I get a bunch of carbs in it, it'll still be difficult to breathe through my nose. Yeah. Uh, but it's not just, it's not like it's just the nose, right? Like my feet have grown two foot, si two shoe sizes since I started gaining because weight. Because of the, the blood or water <laughs> I, retention? I don't have an answer for you, man. I don't know. <laughs> My f my hands are so big, I can't hold on to a deadlift bar anymore. Did your Ooh. hands get bigger? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm really curious about this because it's, you're not just talking about like liquid retention. You're saying that your literal, your 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 extremities have gotten bigger. Yes. There's muscles in your hands yes. and feet. Because, I mean, you can see my hands, they're not bloated. They're just fucking meaty. Right. <laughs> wow. Um, was that a result of growth hormone maybe as well? Maybe. Or? I've yeah. So I've never pushed the growth that hard. So my off season was five IUs when I was adding all that size and I went up to eight <laughs> for prep. Hell yeah. <laughs> I went up to eight for prep, which from what I hear is, you know, moderate. You okay. wouldn't think of that much of a, that's a pretty, two, two shoe size is pretty extreme, right? <laughs> like, from nine to eleven, that's, that's significant. That's so huge, dude. Yeah. yeah, I bet you some of that has to do with too, like the suppression. Like your your whole life, you were a wrestler, and then you were uh, that's what Taylor was competing that's in those weight classes and kind of stuffing yourself into yeah. those weight classes for so long. And then when it was time to grow, Delayed your body's growth. like, hey, nutrients. Yeah. Well, you think about you know the the oh. diet phase where your face is all like right hollowed out. It could Gone. be hands and feet like that too, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. this is uh, the anabolic family tree, and it has like just. It gives you an idea of like testosterone and DHT derivatives and, and things oh, like so that. Oh, so this is like, Miss it goes from boring on the left to fun on yeah, the right. I was going to say, you're missing the uh, the cool family members. Who are the, the cool family members? Well, you know, the methylated ones. They've oh. got Halo in there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what about like SARMs and shit like that? I, yeah. they do, you guys mess with that? Do they do anything? <laughs> no, not a fan. No, I have, uh, I've used Carterine before, which is not a SARM, but it's, it's one of those gray area yeah. things. It's I did a cycle last year a where I just my intention was to, I was getting so many questions from my clients on SARMs that I was like, fuck this, I'm going to try them all. Um, and I just, <laughs> At the same time? No, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> I pictured you just like, awesome. a table full of them. <laughs> He's like, fuck this. Let's just try them. No. <laughs> yeah, it was like a whiskey flight, right? You just line them all. No. It was, uh, I just kind of did them back to back at uh, a moderate dose and had a couple weeks break between each one. And then didn't really notice anything, was kind of pissed off by the end of it. And I did another six-week cycle of 20 milligrams of Anivar, and it blew all of them out of the water <laughs> by a lot. <laughs> so I don't think too highly of them. What about uh, peptides? We're, we're fans of BPC, mm -hmm. and I, I tend to get allergic reactions when I use TB500, so I, mm -hmm. I stay away from that. Um, but yeah, definitely a fan of those. Oral, oral specifically on the BPC for me. I've been recommended MK677, the growth hormone mm -hmm. one. I've never used it, though. BPC comes in oral form as well? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It really helps my digestion. And when I'm getting heavy, you've had that acid reflux mm. shit at the top and it really so helps a lot with that. In my experience, I always seem just subjectively to have done better with the injectable after I you know, strain a muscle or something. I seem to do really well pinning right into that injury, stick that right in there, uh, which does not feel good. But I mentioned Joe Jeffries, who's helped me out with my, my cycles. And you know, he said, based on all the research, there's no difference between taking it orally However you get in your body, it's going to work. Um, so That's the one that has the research behind it with like yes. the rats and they're yeah. like severed like Achilles tendon growing yep. back or something wild like yep. that, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't have the same studies in humans, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of empirical evidence from a lot of people taking it saying, hey, look. What is it we're is, talking about again, right? It's What's called BPC-157. It's a peptide. That's something that I feel like they should just make legal for athletes. Right? Because like if it's yeah. helping people recover. I think they may have just healthy. made it. Illegal, right? Yeah. Is that, oh, I don't they, know. they actually, uh, I think you're thinking of just, NAC, they just banned because it helped with COVID. They banned, yeah, they banned <laughs> that that NAC. I, Big I surprise, right? <laughs> there was something recently, yeah, they just banned too. I want to oh, say maybe it's BPC 157. I can look it up. I'm curious. That there's I think an, it's always been gray market. There, there's an oral though. Like, how do you, like, where do you get that from? I mean, it's, it was a little harder to find, yeah. but I, it hasn't seemed to be any harder to find than the. Injectable stuff, right? I don't think so. It's just more expensive. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But for me, um, I, I've had the injectable stuff. I can't really feel them on anything. And with the oral stuff, it definitely. Do you mix noticeable. it with other stuff? Because BPC mixes good with TB500 from what um, I hear. But you said you had a reaction I, to that. If I, if I can afford it, I'll take 500 micrograms 
to a milligram of oral BPC every day, no matter what. Mm. Um, and obviously it's going to pair better with growth hormone. And I, I don't really know if there's like actual synergy with the anabolics, but I'm sure mm. indirectly. Yeah, I did be. something weird to my shoulder recently and I'm getting it worked on and mm -hmm. I didn't get like an MRI or anything. I, I don't have any idea what I did. It just, it just hurts. Like mm -hmm. one day I just woke up and I couldn't pick my arm up and it just got really weird and uh, just something in like the rotator cuff. So I'm like, I, and I had BPC 157 because I'm an idiot. I just order stuff and I just have it laying around. <laughs> I'm like, I got that sitting around. I should just shoot that into my mm -hmm. shoulder. So I've been using it um, and I'll let everybody know if I have any results with it. So far, I, I've only done it for like three days. So that's not enough time yeah. to really uh, notice anything. Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel because we continue to bring you peak content on this channel. Obviously, you guys are here. You guys have watched the whole video. So like, comment, subscribe. All right. See you later.